What's up everybody, this is Zed for me, and today we're gonna to be talking about reasons why you might get the DSG, or reasons why you might wanna get the manual version of the Golf R. This is a question that I get asked pretty often. Should I go with a DSG or should I get a manual? Living in the United States especially, there's this uh, stigma that you should always be driving stick if you're a dude. And I think this stigma definitely hurts some people's decision making abilities and it sort of airs them on the side of wanting to get a manual instead of the DSG. As you can see, I went with the paddle life here. When I bought the Golf R, it wasn't even available with a six-speed manual yet, um, but I have to tell you that actually did not alter my decision, and it would not have altered my decision to get the DSG instead of the manual. But I want you guys to decide for yourself whether the manual makes sense for you or the DSG. So let's start with the first reason of why you should get the DSG. The first reason why the DSG trumps over the manual is if you're gonna be carrying people around in your car. At the end of the day, a DSG is always gonna be more comfortable for your passengers, so if you care at all about their comfort, a DSG, you know, will make more sense than a manual. So that brings us to the first reason why you should get a manual over a DSG. And the reason is simple, you drive yourself around and you never really have to drive anybody else. Getting a manual means that you don't have to worry about the comfort of your passengers and when you're driving stick and you're alone, there's really no added discomfort from driving a manual because you yourself know when you're going to step on the gas, when you're going to change gears, when you're going to kick in the clutch, and therefore you don't have to worry about passenger motion sickness in a sense at all. Some might argue that if you can drive a manual well, then you won't actually have passengers who complain about the comfort. I'm one of those people. Usually when I drive stick, people don't complain about the comfort. However, for a majority of people who drive stick, it's an issue and I've heard of people, you know, getting sick. Although, at the end of the day, if you drive a DSG uh, very spiritedly, of course people can still get motion sickness. But if you're talking about daily driving, driving for comfort, a DSG will trump over a manual for sure. All right, another reason that goes towards having a manual over a DSG. If you're one of those people who will get bored driving an automatic, in a sense, then I would get a manual. Why? Because a manual means that you're going to be more engaged with driving. There's less chance of you being unaware of your surroundings because you have to be aware of what's going on with your car. Don't make the mistake, however, thinking that driving stick means that you're going to get into less accidents. I'm not sure of the statistics, but if people who drive stick are less likely to get in accidents, it's probably because of the type of people who are driving stick in the first place, not because of a driving stick being an added safety feature in any sense. One of the biggest reasons why I think a DSG makes sense for the Golf R is because the car relies heavily on a large turbo to make its power. So why would that make a difference? The DSG is actually able to hold the boost of the turbo in between gears. So while you may have a turbo in a manual Golf R, every time you let off the gas to change gears, your turbo has to re-spool. This is also part of the reason why DSG transmissions are going to be faster in a straight line as well as in lap times. Not only is it shifting for you and shifting a lot quicker, you're actually holding boost between gears. For this reason, I think that any time that a car is turboed, a DSG transmission should be heavily considered. Another reason you might want the DSG over the manual is if you look at what kind of car this actually is. This car, in the US at least, is a five-door hatch. There's no other form that you can get it in. There's no three-door hatch. And so, at the end of the day, the people who are going to be buying these cars are generally going to make some utility out of it. What that means is that you're probably going to be using the car to do a lot of daily activities as well as go out on adventures. So I don't know about you, but generally I don't go out to these places alone. For example, camping, hiking, snowboarding, skiing, riding bikes, anywhere around. Usually you do that with somebody else and that goes along with one of the first reasons in this video about carrying passengers. To me, it's almost like when a dad buys a Honda Odyssey with a stick shift. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's almost like he has to hold on to some part of his manhood and he just can't give up driving stick. 
At the end of the day, the manual wins for driver engagement, it wins for driver enjoyment, and in the United States, it wins like manhood points. The DSG, however, wins in lap times, it wins in driving comfort, and it wins at holding boost between gears. So for those of you who are deciding between the DSG and a manual, I think it should be a pretty simple choice. If it isn't a simple choice, hopefully some of these reasons will sway you one way or another. But my hope in making this video is that those who feel the pressure of getting a stick shift because you're worried about people calling you a girl or people saying that you're driving an automatic, I hope this video will actually alleviate some of that insecurity. At the end of the day, nothing really beats going out and trying out the DSG for yourself. If you already know how to drive stick, go out and try the Golf R in manual as well. As of right now, for those who are looking into the Golf R, I believe that more manual 2016s are out than there are 2016 DSGs. I think the ratio is somewhere between two thirds manual and one third DSG. So if you can, go out and find yourself a DSG version of the Golf R, test drive it for yourself, see if the dealer will let you, and I think that you'll be thoroughly impressed with the performance and the amount of actual engagement that you can still get out of a DSG using the paddles. So I thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'm curious to hear what you think might be uh, some reasons to get the DSG over the manual and vice versa. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.